Today we're going to talk about weathering erosion and deposition. <coughs> what a drama king. Well, anyway, let's talk about weathering. Weathering is basically taking a big rock and breaking it into smaller rocks. You can do it with a hammer, physical weathering, mechanical weathering. Weathering can also be caused from plants growing into cracks, like in a sidewalk. As a plant gets larger, so does a crack. Cracks in sidewalks and rocks can also occur in the wintertime when the temperature drops below freezing. As it, the, uh, if water goes into the cracks and it freezes overnight, as water freezes, it expands and it cracks the rocks. One of the reasons we talk about weathering erosion and deposition is so that you understand that the world is constantly changing. For instance, we're looking at a ditch here. If we were to come back and look at this same ditch 20 years from now, it'd be different. It would be larger, it'd be smaller, filled in, uh, but it would be different. It wouldn't look the same. It's kind of like if you go out and cut your grass. The day you cut it, the grass is going to be a lot shorter. You go back a few days later, and it's changed. The grass has grown. The world is the same. It's constantly changing. Some of the change is quick, and some of it is slow. Weathering occurs quickly when you're hitting a rock with a hammer, but weathering in nature, for instance, check out the top of this cliff. You know, it's all nice and smooth, or a mountain top that's nice and rounded. The sides of these cliff walls are nice and smooth. Or the rock at the bottom of a riverbed. The more it's weathered, the smoother it's going to be. So a mountain with a round top is probably a lot older than a mountain with a peak. Weathering and erosion work together. Weathering is breaking big rocks into small rocks while erosion is carrying those little tiny rocks away. Rivers are a great example of erosion by water. All those little bitty tiny rocks in that, in that river being taken downstream. And remember, gravity is what pulls that water downstream. That means this river is going to start from a higher elevation, like maybe up in the mountains, and it's going to travel downhill all the way until it gets to the ocean. Besides erosion being caused by water, it can also be caused by wind. You ever been to the beach and have the wind kicked up in your face, up in your eyes, your mouth? Doesn't taste too good, does it? This is an example of wind erosion. Ice is another form of erosion. Check out this glacier. A glacier is just a big chunk of ice. It usually starts at the top of a mountain and gravity will slowly pull it downhill. As it comes down, it's so heavy that it carves out a path. It almost looks like a road, doesn't it? We call this a U-shaped valley. Last but not least, we have deposition. Now, erosion and deposition work together. Anytime you have erosion, where soil is moved away, little tiny rocks are moved away, they have to go someplace. They're not going to just vanish off the face of the earth. So where they land, or where they're deposited, is called deposition. In math terms, erosion is subtraction, while deposition is addition. When an area is being eroded, you're taking away soil from an area. With deposition, you're depositing or adding to an area. So with erosion, you have less than what you started with, while with deposition, you have more than what you started with. Erosion, you end up with maybe a hole in the ground. Deposition, a hill. Let's look at some evidence of erosion. When it rains, the water goes from the rooftop to the ground. The force of the water hitting the ground leaves a hole. Check out this evidence of erosion. It wasn't water that created this hole. I believe it's those dogs digging in the ground. And they look quite proud, don't they? 
it looks like Dexter's found us more evidence of erosion. Not only has it left a hole in the ground from moving soil away, but also it's exposed tree roots. To review, weathering is breaking bigger rocks into smaller rocks, or taking a sharp rock and smoothing it down, while erosion is subtraction or taking away soil, moving it from one area to another. And then deposition is where the eroded soil ends up. It can form a delta at the end of a river where the river meets the ocean, or it can form stalactites in a cave where mineral deposits drip slowly and form what looks like icicles in a cave and it can form sand dunes. These are all examples of deposition. Now for your homework. I'd like for you to find your own examples of weathering, erosion, and deposition.